All right, let's look at the membrane potential. Okay, so the membrane potential That refers to the charge difference across the cell membrane. And this, this is relevant only for excitable cells, cells like the neurons and the muscle cells. Here we go. So if, let's say that this is your axon, for example. This is your axon, or, in fact, or anywhere, as a matter of fact, on a neuron. This is the cell membrane, okay? so. On this area, let's just look at this part of the cell membrane. Imagine the cell, the cell is long and, and, and cut it this way. So, so you see half the cell this way. So around the cell membrane area, you have typically positive charges or more on the outside than the inside. Okay, So you have a charge difference across the membrane. And if you were to, say, get an instrument to measure the difference in, 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 in charges from, from, from the inside to the outside, it, it was called a voltmeter, you would get a certain value. And the value you would get here would be negative 70 millivolts. This is what you would measure on a neuron at rest. So we call this your resting membrane potential. It's equal to negative 70 millivolts the negative sign indicates that the inside is more negative than the outside at, at, at that current spot. Okay, so here, so inside more negative than outside. This is this is the this the magnitude, the size of the difference in charges across the membrane, and this is just the units of, of charge, of which which is millivolts. So again, so the membrane potential, membrane potential is caused by difference in charges, in ion, charges across the membrane. And this value at rest is called your RMP, rest in membrane potential, and it's negative 70 millivolts. Now, in a neuron, so this is, again, this, let's go back here, let's say this is your for example, a neuron membrane, the neuron can sit at negative 70 millivolts, okay? But, 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 but it can also use ion channels, channels to let ions cross over. Because ions, ions, ions can come in two channels, leave two channels, okay? So for example, you might have here maybe sodium ion can come, come, in, come into the cell, maybe potassium ions will leave the cell. And so as these ions flux across the membrane, this value will change, okay? And so let's first discuss the types of ion channels that you have in, in the membrane. So you have your, so let's do it here. So types of ion channels. So you have your ligand gated channels. These channels, so this is say a membrane and here you have a gate, okay, that's a gate. It's closed and it will open if something binds to the gate. So this is your chemical, usually it's a chemical we call a ligand, binds to the gate and that opens the gate. So we call it a ligand gated channel. We're open and closed based on the presence of a ligand attached to the gate. Another type of, of, of gate that we have is your voltage gated channel. Okay, okay so here you go. You have your here, here is closed. Maybe here the voltage is negative. 70 millivolts, for example, and then something may happen to make the voltage now a negative maybe 10 millivolts, and at that voltage, the gate will open and ions pass through. So, 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 so that's a, a voltage gated channel where the voltage across the membrane 
determines whether or not the gate open, opens or closes. So you have two types of channels. And in the neuron, if this is your neuron, like so, with your dendrites like this, typically your LG channels are, are, are located in the, in the dendrites and on the soma, while your voltage-gated channels are distributed along the axon. That's normally how these gates are, 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 are localized to on the neuron. LG gates are on the dendrites and soma, while voltage gates are, are along the axon. Okay, now, when ions flow through these gates, they cause, it, they cause changes in the, the, the memory potential. And so let's look at the types of changes that can happen when ions cross the membrane. So again, here we are hanging out at negative 70 millivolts at rest. So if something happened to cause the membrane potential to become more positive like this. Let's say this is negative maybe 40, negative 10, so it becomes more, more positive that way. Here, negative 83, it's becoming more negative. So, so it becomes more positive that way. This is called depolarization. A change that makes the memory potential more positive, all right? And this depot, you know, can be, maybe is due to influx, meaning things going into the cell, influx of cations. Things charged positively going in the cell will cause the MP to become more positive. Or we can have a case where again, so here, here you are at negative 70 millivolts, you go up. Then you have cases where it, it comes back to RMP. So the return back to RMP of negative 70, that return is called repolarization. Okay. And that is usually due to the loss or efflux, meaning the cell losing positive charge. So efflux of cation. Things leaving the cell will cause the membrane potential to come back down to RMP. And once you overshoot the RMP, that extra undershoot, remember, remember you went from negative 70 up and back, now you're lower than negative 70. So this extra dip, we call that hyperpolarization. You've got extra, and normally this, this is typically only due to, well, yeah, not always, but this can be due to, again, loss, more loss of cation, loss of cation still. So three main changes, depot, repo, and hyperpolarization. Those are the possible changes in the memory potential that can occur when ions cross cell membrane to either when positive ions enter, you depolarize. When positive ions leave, you repolarize and, and, and even hyper, hyperpolarize as well in response to cations leaving the, the cell. All right, let's pause there.